So Canada makes a lot um, of its money exporting uh, natural resources from the ground and shipping it overseas to countries who need it. We actually sit on the third largest oil reserve in the world. Um, so what should we do? Um, as you may have heard, there are two pipelines being proposed, one that goes from Alberta to British Columbia uh, to eventually go into tankers to Asia, and there's another pipeline that we're talking about building that goes from Alberta down to, through to the United States. And some people say pipelines are the way to go because um, the other alternative to shipping oil is things like rail. And we've seen uh, just this summer um, what uh, type of environmental hazards can happen when we ship uh, things like oil through rail in the Lac Bigancic disaster. So what should we do about um, resource development? Um, is it worth the environmental cost? Well, we're blessed as a country with abundant natural resources, and it's not just a source of economic growth, it's actually a source of, um, I think, national pride in Canada, especially in certain regions of the country. But we need to separate or dispel this myth that somehow the environment and the economy are, are, are at odds. They aren't. Uh, a healthy environment is a uh, leads to a healthy economy, and our economy is healthier if we keep our environment healthy. Um, we need to develop our resources in a way that we can get value-added jobs from it here in Canada. You mentioned the um, oil reserves we have in Canada. The challenge is the type of oil we have in Canada needs to be processed quite uh, um, and treated uh, quite a bit before it can actually be used. And we have refining capacity in Canada that creates great jobs. So we need to look at how we can keep those jobs here it's in diminishing Canada. Diminishing refining capacity. You're well, saying actually, we should have in no, invest more in it? Interestingly, in Alberta, um, where we have a lot of these resources, uh, the government's committed to, by 2020, um, having two-thirds of the oil that's being processed in Alberta. That's a great goal to have because that creates jobs here right at home. Rather than with the Keystone Pipeline, I think one of the ones you were talking about, where we're this shipping... Yeah, the pipeline that's going to go through the United States from Alberta, uh, that'll be shipping the raw resource of oil and it's actually sending with it about 40,000 jobs uh, to the United States. But we have to do all of this with the right environmental protections to make sure that we'll be able to benefit from these resources for years to come. But I thought you guys weren't all that in favor of Keystone. Or, or the, and the, and the You're not in favor of Keystone and I think you, the not NDP on your side of things are, don't love what's going on in the oil sands. No, that's not true at all. I think that what's going on in the oil sands is an amazing opportunity. And we need to develop that in a way like um, Alberta, former Alberta Premier Ed Stalmick had a great analogy. He's like, it's as if you have this farm and you decided you're just going to take all the topsoil off the farm and then pass on the farm to the next generation. The problem there is that the next generation can't use the farm for anything it was for economic good because that topsoil is the fertile ground. Well, we're in the middle is where the Liberals stand on the resource development. Absolutely, they, uh, Justin Trudeau, who's the leader, has talked about supporting Keystone. He went down to the United States and supported it, but he and he supports um, the pipeline from from taking oil from Western Canada to Eastern Canada. All parties support that, I yeah, believe. Which, which is a good one. The pipeline exists; it's just reversing the direction of the oil. What he's also said is that we need leadership in the country on environmental policy as well as the economic. Does policy. Does he support our current environmental policies? He, Susan? What Justin has gone and said is he supports the Keystone Pipeline. He supports uh, responsible development in the oil sands, which also includes a balanced approach in investing in. Uh, investing in clean technologies and green technologies and as well having the kinds of regulations so that government has a role that in regulations those are the rules that industry has to follow in keeping the environment clean and doing the best possible job that they can from the extraction of this oil out of the ground. So you're saying tighter environmental rules? I'm saying about tighter uh, responsible environmental rules in support of the economic return that the oil sands do bring. My and only that's problem the there though is that we're going to be He's supporting shipping the oil without those responsible rules in place right now. Uh, no, he's calling for leadership. Okay, let's ask Jason what he thinks. Sure, Let, let's um, actually put these pipelines into context and why they're important. One of the biggest problems that we've got in, in terms of our oil sands development is that we're, paying, we're being paid a very low price for our oil, much lower than world price, because there's not enough places to sell it. So because we can't sell, we, we're essentially only able to sell um, oil to the United States right now because we want to get new markets and open up new markets. Sending oil to the West Coast through uh, the two proposed pipelines or to the East Coast through the Energy East um, uh, um, pipeline will allow us to have more markets um, which will increase the price of a barrel of Canadian oil massively increasing tax revenues and uh, for for the for the country and for Alberta Saskatchewan everywhere everywhere will get will benefit from this so that's why this debate is happening it doesn't sound like there's much of a debate I mean this pipeline versus that pipeline generally most people um, have come around to our position, which we've held for quite some time in terms of, and 
Inv responsible environmental management of the oil sands is 100%. I mean, there's been a lot of progress on this over the past five or 10 years. And the oil sands have gotten a bad rap um, internationally in the United States and in Europe. But a lot of the things that are happening right now in terms of oil it happened started five ten years ago, 10 years Canada ago. Canada has a bad rap in the oil sands because there hasn't been leadership from our federal government. And that's Prime Minister Harper and the team there who have cancelled agreements and backed out of Kyoto and today they put out a news release high-fiving the Australian Prime Minister because he cancelled a, a carbon tax which was a way to raise money dedicated to uh, putting it back into environmental side of things. So Canada has a big black eye when it comes to the environment and so it's important going forward for our economy and our environment to find a balance to be able to use the, the what's coming out of the ground in the oil sands, use it to generate jobs, which it does all over the country because the pipes are built in Ontario that are then used to move the oil. But at the same time, we have to put the rules in place to do it in a way that we, uh, we the, the country stays as green as it can too.